Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today as the entire crypto market is crashing on everyone a day. XRP happens to be the only token that's rising in value. Oh, is XRP decoupling? We're going to get into that and more. But this baby, like I said before, I'll say again, is a metaphor for how retail crypto investors act. Retail is always wrong. And yet again, they'll be wrong in this side of the market, except the XRP army. Ladies and gentlemen, XRP is up 6% on the day. As news has come out, that Binance is getting sued. The entire crypto market is holding on relatively strong. But the potential de-pegging and decoupling of XRP from the rest of the market is on standby. And with that being said, I have a powerful, powerful token to recommend to every single one of you right now. I have just entered into an ungodly FOMO position for this specific crypto. And I think, literally, at any given moment, it's about to explode. If you want to find out why I've chosen this token and which crypto it is, sign up to my OnlyFans down in the description below. As this entry point is about to leave, this crypto is ready to run. And you don't have much time left before it takes off. Now guys, with that announcement, I have to say that I'm having an interview with Waters Above Crypto April 3rd to discuss the upcoming XRP price action as he's been on the money with the specific XRP timeframes and price targets he's been calling recently. Next target we have is 54 cents for the next uptrend. And while XRP is at 48 cents right now, I'm excited to see what happens in the coming days, weeks, and months. You see, what's so interesting is that the worst investor in history, Jim Cramer, who is always wrong, has warned everyone against crypto, stated it's a giant con, and stated he sold all of his coins. To me, this is a massive bullish indicator for the next few weeks as profit-taking may be upon us very, very soon. You see, not only do we have the Jim Cramer indicator on our side, but we also have this XRP lawsuit summary judgment landing this week, most likely. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll never know exactly when this will come out, but quite literally, it could come out this second, tomorrow, this week. And all of you need to be on the edge of your seats. Every indication has been pointing to a more favorable ruling for Ripple in this specific situation. And I expect it. I also expect that if this is in fact the case, the threat of the SEC appealing and taking Ripple to the Supreme Court is on the table. However, I also believe that this could trigger a settlement by both sides, as I think that the Supreme Court, the way it's currently structured, will favor Ripple in the final outcome. Ripple and the SEC are both incentivized to get the job done now. And I believe the price appreciation that we're seeing with XRP is a leading indicator right now for the positive outcome that I suspect we're going to experience. Stay on the edge of your seat, my friends. As I've been saying, banks have been collapsing, a financial crisis is brewing, and I think it's going to be full-fledged this October. Countries are actively moving away from the U.S. dollar. Crypto projects are being sued left and right. Countries are implementing crypto regulations. And the G7 is said to have agreed. SWIFT, CBDCs, digital assets are all going to be the new system. The SEC lawsuit with Ripple is going to be over soon. All of this while the United States is forcing crypto companies to want to move overseas. Chinese state banks are beginning to favor crypto firms. While we in the United States are destroying innovation, our biggest competitor in the global economy, China, is embracing it. 
It's almost as if we're incentivizing the rest of the world to make powerful strides forward while we shoot ourselves in the foot. It's the absolute worst thing to see as an American. And I can't stress my level of disappointment enough. Now, guys, I have to remind you that Binance and CZ are being sued by the CFTC for alleged regulatory violations. And I have to remind every single one of you that we've been calling it on this channel every single day for years. They're going to sue every other crypto project at the exact same time that the Ripple case and XRP is going to get clarity. What a powerful coincidence. While crypto Armageddon happens, XRP's red carpet is being rolled out. In my personal opinion, this is the greatest opportunity for us XRP investors that the market could have presented. And we're going to be opportunistic, tactical savages when executing profit-taking. We must be. Take advantage of your XRP while the rest of the crypto market suffers. Now, as I cap off this video for today, let me vent to all of you very quickly. If the entire crypto community would have rallied behind Ripple and XRP the same way they're beginning to rally, with Coinbase getting its notice from the SEC, they never would have had to rally for Coinbase. As an XRP holder, this is extremely annoying. It's extremely annoying because we warned everyone two and a half years ago. Where's the support now? Nowhere to be found. Ladies and gentlemen, there are no coincidences in this world. The XRP army has been absolutely right in geopolitical events, mass crypto events. And I can't stress it enough. We'll continue to be right about massive developments moving forward. And ultimately, price and our generational wealth is inevitable. Stay the fucking course and become the new 1%. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been right about everything. And here, at the end of this video, I'm going to play you three clips in a row. One of the president of Kenya telling you the dollar is going to shit. And two more clips, one from a liberal news outlet in CNN telling you the BRICS nations and the surpassing of the US dollar as the world's reserve currency is happening in real time, as well as Fox News, a conservative outlet. I'm doing this in this specific order because this is the first time I've seen such an accelerated narrative of the BRICS payment system and the de-dollarization of the world. You think it's a coincidence that just as ISO goes live and just as SWIFT is being discussed in the mainstream that everything else is happening. There are no coincidences. This is all happening in a coordinated manner. Welcome to the synchronistic rollout of the new XRP financial system. And at the end of the day, when everything's said and done, you'll all realize We've always been correct. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable bull here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video. People who work numbers, I am giving you free advice that those of you who are holding dollars, you surely might go into losses. You better, you better uh, do what you must do because uh, this market is going to be different in a couple of weeks. Here's my take. The most interesting outcome of the three-day summit between Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping got limited media attention. Describing their talks, Putin said, we are in favor of using the Chinese yuan for settlements between Russia and the countries of Asia, Africa, and Latin America. So, the world's second largest economy and its largest energy exporter are together actively trying to dent the dollar's dominance as the anchor of the international financial system. Will they succeed?
The dollar is America's last surviving superpower. It gives Washington unrivaled economic and political muscle. It can slap sanctions on countries unilaterally, which frees that country out of large parts of the world economy. And Washington can spend freely, certain that its debt will be bought up by the rest of the world. The war against Ukraine, combined with Washington's increasingly confrontational approach to China, have created a perfect storm in which both Russia and China are accelerating efforts to diversify away from the dollar. Their central banks are keeping less of their reserves in dollars, and most trade between them is being settled in the yuan. They are also making efforts to get other countries to follow suit. The Biden administration has handled the economic war against Russia extremely effectively by building a coalition of almost all the world's advanced economies. That makes it hard to escape from the dollar into other highly valued stable currencies like the euro or the pound or the Canadian dollar because those countries are also warring with Russia. What might have been a sharper turning point for the dollar's role was Donald Trump's decision in May 2018 to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal. The European Union was strenuously opposed to this move, but it watched as the dollar's dominance meant that Iran was immediately excluded from the world economy. Jean-Claude Juncker, then president of the European Commission, proposed enhancing the euro's role internationally to shield the continent from what he called selfish unilateralism. The Commission outlined the path to achieve this. It hasn't happened. There remain too many fundamental doubts about the future of the euro itself. Dollar dominance is firmly entrenched for many good reasons. A globalized economy needs a single currency for ease and efficiency. The dollar is stable. You can buy and sell it any time, and it's governed largely by the market and not the whims of a government. That's why China's efforts to expand the yuan's role internationally have not worked. Ironically, if Xi Jinping wanted to cause the greatest pain to America, he would liberalize his financial sector and make the yuan a true competitor to the dollar. But that would take him in the direction of markets and openness that is the opposite of his current domestic goals. All that said, Washington's weaponizing of the dollar over the last decade has led many important countries to search for ways to make sure that they do not become the next Russia. The numbers are revealing. The share of dollars in global central bank reserves has dropped from roughly 70% 20 years ago to less than 60% today and falling steadily. The Europeans and the Chinese are trying to build international payment systems outside the dollar-dominated SWIFT. Saudi Arabia has flirted with the idea of pricing its oil in yuan. India is settling most of its oil purchases from Russia in non-dollar currencies. Digital currencies might be another alternative, and in fact, China's central bank has created one. All of these alternatives add costs. But the last few years should have taught us that increasingly nations are willing to pay a price when they want political goals to trump economic ones. We keep searching for the single replacement for the dollar, and there will not be one. But could the currency suffer weakness by a thousand cuts? That seems a more likely scenario. The author and investor Ruchir Sharma points out, right now, for the first time in my memory, we have an international financial crisis in which the dollar has been weakening rather than strengthening. I wonder if this is a sign of things to come. If it is, Americans should worry. I spoke last week about the bad geopolitical habits Washington has developed because of its unrivaled unipolar status. It's even more true economically. America's politicians have gotten very used to spending seemingly without any concern about deficits. Public debt in America has risen almost five-fold, from roughly $6.5 trillion 20 years ago to $31.5 trillion today. The Fed has solved a series of financial crises by massively expanding its balance sheet almost 12-fold, from around $730 billion 20 years ago to about $8.7 trillion today. All of this only works because of the dollar's unique status. If that were to wane, America will face a reckoning like none before. Mayor Putin announced this week that Russia will begin using the Chinese yuan 
uh, to, for international payments instead of the dollar. Saudi Arabia is also in talks with Beijing to do the same thing. Speaking of Saudi Arabia, meanwhile, they are in talks uh, with Iran as well to consider an economic alliance with China in Russia. And they can even be joining the BRIC countries, which is an acronym for these countries here, Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. These countries all have emerging economies. So what happens if our economy and the U.S. dollar are no longer the world's do dominant currency? Former Assistant Treasury Secretary and host of the Monica Crowley podcast, Monica Crowley, is here to weigh in. Monica, great to see you this morning. Uh, let's start right there. What happens if these emerging economies move away from the U.S. dollar towards the Chinese yuan? Well, good morning, Will. It's great to be with you. And it's really hard to overstate exactly how catastrophic the abandonment of the U.S. dollar would be. Um, as the world's uh, global reserve currency. Look, since the end of World War II, the dollar has been the safe place to go, and it's been backed up by a couple of things. It originally was backed up by gold, but President Nixon took, took us off the gold standard, so there's no hard asset backing up the dollar anymore for the last 50 years. But also it's been backed up by the strength and economic power of the United States and the fact that oil has always been traded in dollars. If that were to end, that would mean the end of the U.S. dollar. Look, th there is a perfect storm happening right now, Will. The, the world's uh, reserve currency, being that, uh, having that status, has been a real privilege. But we've abused the privilege by wholly reckless monetary and fiscal policies over many years, certainly over the last couple of years, which has really devalued the dollar. On top of that, now you do have this perfect storm of Biden's weakness, his war on American domestic energy production, the Ukraine war, and as you point out, because of all of these things, we've got America's enemies led by China forming a new economic bloc. And all it would take at this point now, because we're at this pivotal moment, Will, mm -hmm. is for Saudi Arabia, who has indicated that they're open to this, to say, you know what, we're going to be open to considering other currencies to trade in oil. If that were to happen, there would be a complete implosion of the global economic system, but certainly the American economic system. And if that were to happen, you'd be looking at sky high inflation, just raging Weimar Republic kind of inflation. If you think inflation is bad now, just wait. But more importantly, we would lose our economic dominance and we would right. lose our superpower status. Uh, Monica, the world's reserve currency, you said it's a privilege for the United States for the dollar to have been the world's currency. What, how does that relate to each individual American? How has that changed or impacted or improved our lives throughout the last several decades? Yeah, I mean, it's given the United States incredible dominance um, in, in the world in terms of the economic system and in terms of trade. It's kept prices down. Mm. So whether it's energy prices, whether it's your food prices, the, the entire global economic system is reliant on the safe and secure dollar. But that is no longer true, again, because we've been printing money like crazy and devalued right. uh, the power of the dollar and the value of the dollar. But on top of it now again oil is the critical linchpin of this if Saudi Arabia decides to join with America's enemies here and start trading oil in different currencies that is going to undermine the entire global right. economic system and here at home you know what it's going to mean for us it's going to mean raging inflation so much worse than anything we have ever experienced well yeah. and I'll tell you they're setting it up so that they can then come to the rescue by introducing central bank digital currencies. Right. If they were to do that and the United States already has a pilot program, that means the loss of your individual economic freedom because the government will have total access and control of everything you buy and sell and the ability to turn it off like wow. that. Ominous warning. I hear you. Saudi Arabia is the tipping point. Oil trading in dollars is the tipping point. Why do I hold XRP? because Ripple's the chosen one to lead the new global digital payment system, and they use XRP. In 2013, the Federal Reserve began looking for faster payments options. Two years later, an action plan was born and a federal payments task force was created. It included one company focused on crypto, 
Ripple. In 2014, the World Bank and Better Than Cash Alliance, which includes the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Clinton Global Initiative, and the governments of 32 countries put out a report called The Opportunities of Digitizing Payments. One year later, the Better Than Cash Alliance featured one crypto company on their website, Ripple. Today, Better Than Cash Alliance and all other UN initiatives are focused on a single agenda, the Sustainable Development Goals for 2030. You can see the SDGs logo on Bill Gates' lapel, world-leading companies, the Better Than Cash Alliance website, and on the UN's official exchange, Exchange. What crypto is Exchange officially utilizing for their carbon credit solution, XRP. The world will move to a new international standard for exchanging electronic messages between financial institutions by 2025 called ISO 20022. Who was the first ISO 20022 member focused on distributed ledger technology? Ripple. Who's partnered with over 300 financial institutions, including Bank of America, American Express, PNC, Santander, SBI, HSBC, Standard Chartered Bank, Bank of England, India, Singapore, Scotland, Australia, and Indonesia, the largest banks in Japan, Canada, Egypt, the Middle East, United Arab Emirates, Thailand, Morocco, Bhutan, South Korea, Brazil, and Latin America? Ripple. Who is a former employee overseeing the Federal Reserve? Ripple. A former employee overseeing the world's largest asset manager, BlackRock's Digital Asset Division? Ripple. Leading Australia's CBDC effort? Ripple. Who hired a former Treasury of the United States? Ripple. Two former Federal Reserve attorneys to their board? Ripple. Two former Clinton and Obama advisors? Former Minister of Defense and Economics of Germany? Former Business Director at SWIFT? Former SWIFT board member? Former CFO of PayPal? Former Head of the DTCC? Former Chief Business Officer at Uber? Former VP of Amazon and former SEC Chair on their legal team? Ripple. Who's a member of the Digital Pound Foundation, Digital Dollar Project, Digital Euro Association, Mojaloop, IMF's High Level Advisory Board on Fintech, Hyperledger Blockchain Consortium, Open Payments Coalition, Faster Payments Council, Global Payment Steering Group, Cross Border Working Group, International Association for Trusted Blockchain Applications, Crypto Climate Accord, University Blockchain Initiative, World Wide Web Consortium, and a featured partner of the World Economic Forum with three members of their team directly listed on the WF website? Ripple. Now, does Ripple and XRP sound like they're going to disappear, or do they sound like they're part of a much bigger plan? You decide.